Welcome back. This is the second lesson in our new online course, Health, Safety, and Certified Fall Prevention Teacher Training. Okay. As I mentioned before, we'll have five lessons on safety and another five on the teacher training. The teacher training, however, really begins with learning Tai Chi Moving for Better Balance, the eight forms that make up the fall prevention program, all right? Now that program is the official program of the Oklahoma Health Department and has gone into 11 other states. It is one of the most efficient with the highest rate of stopping falls among seniors and this is very important it requires no equipment which can become very expensive and factor into how well uh, a program works okay now last time we met we picked out the specific elements of the eight forms of the Tai Chi Moving for Better Balance from Yang style Tai Chi and applied them to the tragic situation in which our outstanding graduate, Christy Lagrange, was murdered by a client. Right. It was something that we wanted to deal with immediately figure out a way to create training to prevent that from ever happening again. As we went through the process of creating a possible defense for that, we went through several of the key forms in Tai Chi Moving for Better Balance. And uh, what I'd like to do today is to remind you of those and then show you the unique way that Yang style Tai Chi is practiced because it's not practiced the way we typically practice athletic events or even fighting in the ordinary sense. Uh, Master Yang had a, an insight into how to become the most effective way to practice. And it, uh, it, it's kind of a surprise. Right. Well, let's take a look at the underlying principles that we spoke of last time. One of which was never meet force with force. Okay. Now, when you're going back to his time and you're looking at villagers out <laughs> trying to defend their homes and their families. And here come the attacking warriors, really, uh, with swords and shields and horses and armor. It's a real question, how are they going to be able to do this, okay? And Master Yang found an ingenious way to make that work. I think I mentioned that he had become a master of the Chen style of Tai Chi, which is arguably the most powerful and violent form. In the process of doing that, he was, I suppose, always looking for some way around it, because that's what the villagers were essentially facing is overwhelming force, okay, by professional uh, attackers. Now, so how we do this, we'll start off with the forms that we used uh, to create a feasible defense uh, for Christie in her attack. Okay, and then we'll look at how this would be practiced uh, by both the people in the safety orientation and the people in the Tai Chi 
Moving for Better Balance program because he essentially practiced fall prevention as a vital part of defending the village. As I pointed out, the most fatal thing you can do is to fall in front of somebody with a sword or a spear. It's over. Okay. So, one of the first ones that we did was we looked at one called Single Whip. Okay. And the idea was, Chris, help me. Um, Christy apparently came in the door of her client's house. I think I mentioned uh, he had promised that the mother was there and they were going to discuss his behavior. She had been tricked into arriving at a time when her partner couldn't be there. And that was a critical element that we have built in to all of our training now where everybody has a training partner enough to go with them wherever they need to go. We won't run into this attack from behind if you have someone coming with you, okay? But it happens, okay? So she is in there, she calls out for the mother, and here comes the weapon, okay? Now he had a brick. Uh, that's a pretty unusual weapon, but it could have been anything, and we have to factor in a weapon when we're looking at attacks, okay? Now, single whip is a technique that was used to stop an overwhelming force, and that's pretty much an overwhelming force, okay? And the overwhelming force I'm referring to is a war horse coming at you. Now, you're not going to be able to do anything with the horse physically, but the horse has built-in reflex systems, protective systems. And if instead of Chris, this was a horse, <laughs> and I crack a whip here, the horse is going to turn. The rider can't do anything about that. That's a defensive reflex. But by turning, if he's over here with his sword, and then I crack it again and send him back up through his own troops, I've created a reflex-based defense. Okay, now, essentially, that's what we're going to make use of. When this comes up, I do this, okay? Now, there is a point on the arm, and we have them all over our bodies, or if you put pressure here, the arm will stop. Uh, our body has stop signs, if you want to call them that, where if there's pressure, it won't let you go on in because it's, you're going to be injured, okay? These are protective parts of our nervous system. So the first thing we had to do was cause this to pause. Now, I can do it this way or this way, whatever. Now, in the original one I did in the workshop, we went directly into the next move, which was like that, which is, by the way, another way to deal with a horse. It was called parting the wild horse's mane. And the idea was, if the horse actually gets right up here to you, and you need to have him reflex-based, move off to the side instead of running over you, you can run your hand up the side of his nose and into his mane, and the same thing will happen. He'll turn, okay? Now. So, that's what I'm doing on the other side, and when I get to here, there's probably a reflex aid. Something running up here, there's a lot of nerves and so forth. There'll be a reflex, but it probably won't take him completely away. Huh? So I have the leverage, however, to do that. Huh? I'm here, I raise up and turn, especially 
if I'm turning and moving my hand up toward the ceiling, I'm literally taking him off his foundation and he goes stumbling out of the way. Now, the hope was that when, if Christie could have stopped the incoming brick, come here and leverage the guy out of the way and then run back for the door, she wasn't very far away. She could have reached there, and gotten back outside, and chances are that would have been the end of it. Uh, there's no reason to believe that he would follow her out in the street and all that sort of thing. Which is a little bit of an artificial advantage because in most cases when you are escaping someone who's attacking you you don't have a door you don't have some way that will stop them okay so we have to build in a way that once you get past that you're going to get some help with the person who's coming after you and that's going to be your partner and that's why it's so important to have a training partner somewhere nearby in the office, wherever you are, wherever you have to go, okay? And that would include walking around with your family, walking around anywhere. And we can accumulate these training partners from all phases of our lives, uh, in part by the fact that we have reduced overall fee for enrolling in this program to forty dollars okay that's virtually half of what it was when it was a professional workshop but everybody would like to have someone protect them they protect the other person that's certainly worth forty dollars to stop one of these things okay so here we are we've got this one and we have this one, and then we have upgraded, because I mentioned that while I can do this, I want to make sure that a beginner could be as successful as that. And I always have to be careful, having years of practice, that I don't create something that a person can be would be able to do after months of practice, I need to have something that they can do effectively as soon as possible. Because unlike <laughs> the games of combat, whether it's in football or MMA or something else, uh, we have no control over when the attack's going to be. It could be today, tonight. So I have to have a system that will provide the protection absolutely as soon as possible for the person with the least physical resources, if I'm going to be realistic, okay? Now, there is a way to stop an incoming force that doesn't depend on me getting all the way through here and coming up with all the good timing, huh? It's called Fair Maiden Works the Shuttle. They have wonderful disguise as of their techniques. But I'm standing here, and here comes a force, okay? And if I come up like this, okay, the first thing. As I'm coming up, I'm moving the person back off balance, which takes away the force of this strike. Okay. So I'm here, okay, and I can freeze it. Right there, I actually am taking him off of his heels. I'm removing the force that's incoming. Okay. Now, so I'm here, and then I'm here, okay. Now I can handle this. A small individual, all they need is to have their feet aligned 
and they're moving the person off his power. Now, around the other way, uh, this the power is coming, right? And I'm letting it come on through, and then I'm adding to it. But that takes speed and timing and accuracy that this can handle much more easily, okay? So, the other advantage of this is when I'm here, I can see whether there is an open path for me to escape around this way, or what if, according to the way the office is organized or the house, whatever, I look out here and there's a, there's a bunch of furniture and I'm not gonna be able to get around, huh? And so I come back around this way, okay? And there's a real good chance he's going to be coming with the other hand anyway, okay? So now I have that option and I can come this way, okay? So that gives me both sides. It would actually, what if he's left-handed? I always have to worry about this because I'm left-handed. And that's been an advantage <laughs> in all of the combat stuff I've ever done because that's not what people practice for. See? So anyway, I'm here, okay, and I can come around this way, okay. So that gives us left-handed, right-handed, open path on this side, open path on that side, and I think that's a huge upgrade for everyone who took the workshop and there was 18 people all together uh, because people could bring a training partner. But the sad thing is, uh, I had also made a presentation, I think I mentioned this, at the National Social Workers statewide meeting and showed them what we had come up with because they were very concerned. And they all wanted to do it, of course. Who doesn't? But the, the way the schedule works in a social worker's life and the distance of coming across the state and spending two days somewhere, it didn't work. Now, however, all these people who, yes, I want to do this, I, I'm getting concerned about my own safety, uh, will have it. They'll have it. Nurses will have it counselors, therapists, and of course the social workers, but so will anyone else who wants to have a way to defend themselves without doing harm. Because that's not only a part of the healthcare ethical system, which people agree to, they take these jobs and are at risk of losing the job if they harm somebody in the process even of protecting themselves. So this is going to open this up to that whole group which I think of as the this is the first line of a civil society. They're the people that are that, that are helping the meth addicts, the opioid the returning soldiers with PTSD, the people who desperately need someone to get them away from the things that are ruining their lives and turning around and ruining others as well, okay? So, but there is also a huge community of individuals in our society who have religious beliefs that include not harming other people, okay? So they could be restrained as well. Okay. Now, we'll, we'll, I'll show you how to practice this, but we, I need to remind you that at the heart of the Yang style engineering, I, I think of it as engineering, we have the principles, never meet force with force, okay? And a 
essentially when we did what we just did, I am following that, huh? Because I didn't meet it there, this just froze it, huh? When I came up to there, I froze it, huh? And by lifting, I'm not meeting for it. This is the force, and I'm not meeting that force. I'm avoiding it, okay? So that works, that, that follows the, the protocol. Never go into pain. Well, <laughs> if you succeed in the first one, you're home on the second one. If for some reason you don't quite <laughs> manage that first one and you find yourself in pain because it's forced you off balance, it's, it's, it's maybe even starting an injury. You get away from that, never go into pain. Pain is the sign that you just failed on the first one, okay? Now, what we have to remember that we're not talking about games. We're not talking about referees. We're not talking about cages. This goes on all day long until the incoming warriors either overwhelm the villagers and take over, or the villagers somehow handle the situation to the point that the incoming warriors <clears throat> aren't getting anywhere. Uh, they say, I'm <laughs> these people keep going around, now he's here, this is where all my strength is, and now he's over here on my flank. Huh? And I can't get him this way, and he's got my whole vulnerable side of my head, which is one of the most vulnerable parts of our body. And one more step and he's behind me. And all of my strength and power is here. And if he's behind me, he can take me over backwards. Okay. Now, when this happens, you're not going to overwhelm people that are doing that. You can spend your time going through this process, but you're not going to win. So it begins to make sense to let's just go somewhere else. Let's go find another village that's getting out there like this, all the stuff out front, force on force, and we can overwhelm them. And that's what happened. The Yang style spread. I think I mentioned Yang Lu Chen actually uh, was observed by the brother of the emperor and was invited to train the emperor's guard because the emperor, if something attacks them, they just want to get them and their family out of there. Okay. And he had countless challenges and battles, and I think I mentioned. He would do what we were just doing. Huh? And uh, when, he would, when he would get to this point, uh, he would say, well, you did a pretty good job, and I, I, really, <laughs> I really appreciate you giving me a chance to practice. Uh, why don't we go get dinner? And uh, he, he would establish a friendly relationship, and people were so relieved that they hadn't landed on their head that they were quite welcome to this idea. Huh? And that also accomplished the second major goal. If you conquer somebody and they have friends and they have family, there is a real possibility that they will come after you. Yang Lu Chen is said to have made that mistake one time early in his career. And that family and these persons followed him. So he was doing great. He was. He was the invincible. Everybody wanted to learn how to do this. But then he had this person that would come in and sneak in and disguise himself and try to kill him. And that we want to stop that too. We stop the aftermath, okay? And this psychologically makes perfect sense. You do this thing, you get in a position they see that they're not going to get anywhere, and you say, well, 
I think we had a good exercise. Uh, I learned some stuff, you learned some stuff, and we'll just go on. That kind of happened to me in the fifth grade when a bully came into school, transferred in, and tried to corner me and have a fight. Well, I didn't know this, but I, I think I must have grasped the concept because I ran over to the backstop of the softball field and just ran around it, and he never could catch me, and that's kind of what we're doing here. Then the bell rang. And he found out that, you know, I went to summer camp. People did that back then. I was kind of a track star. No, I was not some weak kid that he could establish his uh, bully credentials with. And then he just avoided me. I never really saw him again. And that I thought, this is perfect. I have to find some way in my life so that I can stop attacks and make people stop and then go on. And uh, I turned to judo and when I went to OU and uh, was fortunate to have an incredible instructor and uh, did that from 56 all the way up to 62. And in the military, kind of reached the ultimate point on that. I organized a team in an intelligence site on the Turkish coast. And we got to go to the Mediterranean Military Judo Championships in Athens. Well, the Air Force teams had already gone through their selection and we were just arriving and here was the number one champion here. Here was the captain of the team. And as is usually the case, I couldn't throw him, he couldn't throw me. You know, it was a stalemate. But I was able to slip down and defeat him on the ground with a, with a choke. Okay. And that was, a, that was a wonderful victory, wasn't it? Except I must have, <laughs> now I think back, this is what Yang must have saw. I looked up and I saw the other team. They were just heading for Germany you know, until I showed up. And I knew in my heart instantly I could never get out of that room alive. If this was not a sport and there wasn't a referee and probably military police. And I gave up on anything that will take you to the ground where other people, possibly with hostile intent, could simply come over and defeat you the same way that you're defeated when you hit the ground in the old days by the sword and spear of the hostiles. Okay. So I looked and looked and looked and finally found Ching Yi Kung Fu and within it Yang Stal Tai Chi. So, let's take a look at practicing. Now, if I'm going to practice this one, okay, uh, this is the way it works. Uh, in the form, when you do the practice, and you're at the point of doing this, you step out, okay, you use this as a counterbalance. You come out to here and come back. That's that strike I just did. Now, by planting this foot in this strong position, okay, I go out and I come back, right? And that's what we need to practice. When we do it in the form, in the, in the modern version of the form, there's also what is called hold the ball. And I think I mentioned this last time, where you're like this, and then you step over and you're like this. And here is the way you guard against whatever is out here. Now, it could be anything. It could be people, and you're trying to get away, and you guard and you guard. 
the event that I run into in my ongoing Tai Chi class with 70 and 80 year old women mainly is what happens is if they are at all unstable they will bounce off a door frame or hit a wall or the wind will get them and this is the way you protect them so you're here you see it it's like holding a ball uh, there are people who will just put the hand out this way I've had members of my class near a wall or a door frame hit it and that's why I have them turn the hand to a safe surface. Okay. This protects the hip, this protects the head. Okay, I have them come up to the wall and go over and find the exact angle where they can push back and have this guard. Okay. So if I'm here, I do this. I counterbalance and I come out like this and I come back, okay? Now, that's the way to practice a single grip. You step out, you counterbalance, you come to here, you come back, and you hold the ball, okay? Now, the latest addition to that is very simple. You're here and you, you come back to here and go on to the next one. That's called preload. Now you can, when you do this on the wall and you need to practice, you come up to here, okay, <laughs> you've stopped it, right? But you need some kind of muscular energy to get you off the wall because you're not gonna push too much that way. So you preload and this swings you off to the next form, okay? So we're here, hit, come back, Hold the ball, preload, come over to here, okay, and we've accomplished it. Preload, I could come back over to here, couldn't I? Come up to here, preload, single whip, come back to here. Now, as I step from one side to the other, I need to be lifting my feet, okay, so I don't trip over things down there, okay. So, this one, we come back, hold the ball, preload, counterbalance, strike, come back, hold the ball, preload. You can go back and forth that way and have this work, working toward a reflex, okay? And that's where we have to go for anything to be fast enough. Now, what Master Yang realized was the best way to practice all of these is slowly on perfect balance huh? because at that on perfect balance and relaxed is the way I can actually develop the most speed okay okay so and I need that speed right the thing about physical speed with humans is if I'm relaxed, I'm only driving this with one set of muscles. We're set up with opposing sets, okay? If I have tension in my weapon, I will be pushing it out with one, but there will be others that will be holding me back some, okay? So if I'm relaxed, I can actually come out faster. The other thing, which is critical in the combat, if I'm relaxed, I can also change direction. Huh? And that's critical. So being relaxed, practicing slowly, and when you see people practicing the Tai Chi and doing this form, if they're doing it correctly, it will be this relaxed form. Now, it may be hard for them to imagine how that's going to protect them, but it did come from a, a time when it was actually saving lives and saving the village against overwhelming forces. Okay, so let's, that's the way we can do the, the single whip and translate that into practice. Um, we have Fair Lady, Fair Maiden works the shuttle, right? so I'm here. 
I step out and I sweep. In modern terms, people say, well, you, your hands go up like you're taking a picture. You know, this looks the way we hold our hands when we take a photograph. Uh, I'm up to here, okay. Now, we know that actually this is stopping an incoming hand and this is putting the pressure to straighten the person up and set them back. Okay. So we're here, okay. Reload. And we can come over to here, huh? Hold the ball, reload. Step out and come to here, okay. Hold the ball, reload. Step out and come to here. Practice again on both sides because we really use it on both sides. So that's the next thing to practice, okay? Now, we've done the single whip, relaxed, on balance, so we can move at any moment. We've done Fair Maiden works the shuttle, okay? We have a single whip, okay? Now, there is a point where we can leverage a person, and that one is from uh, parting the wild horses bank, okay? So you're here, you hold the ball, you preload, huh? you step out, and this hand drops, and this one just comes up like that, okay? And you hold, preload, this one drops, this one comes up. You notice it's the edge of my hand here. And it comes around to there, okay. Hold the ball, preload. This is a very powerful motion. And we always use the edge of the hand that is least vulnerable. Here, this edge is least vulnerable. Here, this edge is least vulnerable, okay. And you recall that's the one where we finally duck under and leverage the person off, okay? So, that will give you things to practice. Practice them slowly, okay? Out, back, here, out, back. Uh, the fact that you're doing it slowly and you're doing it on balance is the critical part. Okay. Practice with your partner. So uh, I'm doing this, this one, <laughs> okay, uh, and then I'm going to, I've done this, I'll come back to here and back to here now. We'll trade positions. Uh, and uh, when I come around, he grabs it and then he does the same thing. Okay. Now, when we trade positions, what I'm going to look for is the moment he sees me move. He knows where I'm going and what to do, okay? He's not waiting to see what happens. And this is the way that you can get <clears throat> the timing advantage in this. When this comes up, he's right there, okay? Now, that's the secret, that's the key to the safe escape system. Typically, when people see something aggressive, they cover up, they go on the defense. By the time you've done the defense, you've lost the moment to interrupt this. Okay. So that's the essential breakthrough. Uh, unfortunately, the people in healthcare that are very concerned about not harming anyone have been simply doing this now. Uh, if I'm a boxer and I have gloves, I can pretty well cover up. But if I'm barehanded like this and a person punches in, there's almost no chance I can stop that. 
is going to come in, right? One thing that worries me is I see ladies mainly in aerobic classes huh, who are doing this. Okay? Okay, now that is a striking action, huh? and I can tell kind of from their attitude that they, <laughs> they picture somebody out there that is a problem, huh? and they're doing this. Huh? They're getting the mechanics of striking. If you'll notice, <laughs> my face is wide open. <laughs> so I can be doing this and this thing will come right over the top. Okay. The other problem is, you'll notice that we never strike with a fist. A fist is a very fragile item. Huh? I can hit the forehead and break the hand just like that. So we're using edges that can handle heavy impact. Uh, the fist is not one. You find people using the fist in boxing and MMA, but these are all wrapped up and then they're covered. Uh, so, and they've made the strikes that we use illegal. Okay. They're not illegal in defending yourself. But they are, because of their power and damage, uh, they have to keep all the players going. If they release some of the stuff we're doing, you couldn't make a career out of it. <laughs> so, yeah, this is not a substitute. You need to have something with an edge that is working. Uh, and you need to have something that takes people off balance. So, practice the ones that we just demonstrated. Do them over and over, train sides, okay? And when you get to the point where you're doing this in a relaxed, effective manner, okay, then uh, get your phone out, take a picture, have a friend, take a picture of you doing it and send it to me and I will proceed with the coaching, okay? And that's the fundamental advantage of being enrolled and keeping on track and making this work. Thank you very much, and we'll have more lessons as soon as we can.